Yeah. And welcome back. Speed skater Brian Hansen won a silver medal in 2010, and in just a few weeks, he'll be competing with the U.S. Olympic long track speed skating team once more. It's so exciting. We are thrilled to welcome Brian back to the Morning Blend. And he brought along a little something, because as Sylvia mentioned earlier, you're an entrepreneur, too. Yeah. This is your, your business venture, right? Tell us what's in front of us here. Um, so this is my, uh, my idea kind of for a business product. And uh, what it is, it's a foam roller water bottle. So pretty much what we make is, yeah, are these sleeves here. And mm -hmm. like this slips over, you know, a couple different water bottles. And, um, and it pretty much turns your, your water bottle into a foam roller. So um, it's something that me and my brother have been working on for the past uh, couple years. And, um, you know, it's come a long way, um, and now we're selling them, and people have a lot of interest in it. So it's, it's now, for people who don't understand the purpose of the foam roller, why don't you explain it? Um, so foam rollers are used as a fitness product to um, to kind of loosen up your muscles, and it's it's like a form of self massage or you know stretching. It breaks up you know what you call fascia, which is like connective tissue in our muscles that kind of. Uh, you know, holds them together, but at the same time, it can kind of be restrictive. So it helps, um, you know, athletes before and after workouts stay injury free, warm up and, you know, loosen up before they work out. And people can buy it online, right? Where yeah. do they go to, to, to find out more about your water bottle and foam roller? So uh, we call the product uh, Bottle Bark because it's like the bark of the bottle. Okay, and, um, Bottle Bark. Yeah, so you can find it at www.bottlebark.com. Awesome. Well, right. We wish you lots of success with that, but also we wish you lots and lots of success in just about three weeks. The Olympics are only about three weeks away. Yeah, it's, um, it's getting exciting. It's uh, the final countdown, I guess. So, You, you know, uh, uh, Olympic athletes in your sport, some move out um, west to do training. You've chosen to stay mm -hmm. here in Milwaukee at the Pettit Center, which is, is known, you know, worldwide for being an excellent training facility, which I think is exciting for people here in Wisconsin. How did you, how did you make that choice to stay and train at the Pettit? Um, I mean, it kind of just happened naturally. I was going to high school, or I mean, even before high school, like, you know, I started skating in Northbrook and um, north suburb of Chicago. And then my parents used to drive me up to Milwaukee after school. And, um, you know, my coach, Nancy Sweater Peltz, she's from the area. So, you know, after high school, I had the option to, if I wanted to move out and train with a national team out in Salt Lake City. But, you know, what I was doing worked and, you know, my family was supportive of it. and I you know, stayed comfortable with what I knew and, you know, my friends and um, decided to go to school here too at Marquette. And uh, yeah, I mean, there was just more of a, you know, a, a life for me here than out there. Mm -hmm. So you decided to stay home and we, of course, are very grateful that you decided to do that because we love to have our Olympians here in Milwaukee. How are you preparing for the Olympics? Because like I said, you have three weeks. You have to figure out a way to get in some, a lot of strong training, but also you have to get in some tapering time. So tell us how you do that. Um, well, I mean, it's um, pretty much right now is uh, we're it's mainly the base layer of training so we're doing like you know a lot of more strength stuff and then you know as we get closer to the Olympics it's going to be more specific stuff towards the race so um, you know right now it's it's been pretty straightforward with like you know stuff that I'm used to but as I get closer I'm going to really want to try to prepare more specifically towards my events which are you know the 500,000 and 1500. Um, so what's a day, a day like in your life? You wake up and what do you eat? Um, I mean, a lot. Yeah. Do you eat a, <laughs> a lot? lot of everything? Lot. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I eat, uh, you know, generally speaking, in the morning, I eat breakfast with uh, yogurt and fruit. And, you know, lunch, I usually have a sandwich and dinners, pasta, or, um, you know, something like that. Some carbs? Yeah. At night? And do, do you eat a lot? Yeah, I think so. I would, <laughs> I would say I eat a lot. Uh -huh. um, I mean, compared to, like, you know, a lot of my friends who don't work out a lot, I definitely eat more than them. And how much are you working out in a day? How many how many hours do you spend like either training, doing strength stuff, doing stretching, whatever? How many hours does that consume in a day? Um, I mean total time it can be like six hours um, but the actual working out part is, is usually around an hour and a half to two hours. Um, a lot of it is cooling down, warming up, stretching, um, you know, putting your skates on and stuff like that. So um, I mean, it, it ends up being a lot and, uh, you know, it's very time consuming as well, so. Yeah. 
And the dedication that it takes because six hours a day, could you imagine no. taking that much time <laughs> for, your, um, for, your, uh, for your career, for your health, for your uh, energy, for your growth? That is um, dedication that athletes have. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, we every athlete that's, you know, training for the Olympics has to give up a lot. I think, you know, for some people it's moving away, for some people it's school or getting a job or something like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, every athlete has to put in the same amount of hours and, you know, train the same amount if they want to make it to the Olympics or make it to that top level. So, you know, that's kind of a cool thing about the sport is that, you know, there's no easy way to do it. Really quick, do you have a favorite Olympic speed skater, past, present, who you just really admire? Um, I mean, I grew up with Shawnee Davis, you know, like he was from Chicagoland and um, I was from Chicagoland and, um, you know, and we both trained in Milwaukee a bunch our whole lives and, um, you know, I kind of always looked up to him when I was little and now it's really cool to just be competing against him you know, going for Good the for you. top spot. Yeah, you got you got a lot going on right now. We're going to um, help people figure out how they can do you as we get closer to the Olympics. So you can follow his progress at brianhanson2014.com. He's also on Twitter at Brian T. Hansen. That's where you can find him on Twitter. And be sure to watch the Olympics here on NBC. Today's TMJ4 is super excited to be bringing you the Winter Olympics from Russia. It's just 21 days now until the Olympics. So be sure to keep your eye on today's TMJ4. The opening ceremony is happening February 7th. Great to have you on the show and back. Thank Wish you. you so much luck. Go get them. Thank yeah, you. I agree. Thanks so much.